Hey, what is up garage people? Well, I just recently changed the oil in 2016 Ram 1500 with 5.7 Hemi and I switched to what I would consider a uh, premium synthetic. Went with AMS oil signature 5W20 and I was expecting that this oil is gonna last me a really long time. And what happened is I ended up with a check engine light, maybe a thousand or so miles into this oil change. And I wanted to just walk you through the steps of uh, what I did to solve this problem. And I hope it helps you out. So anytime you've got a check engine light or a service engine light, the first step you wanna take is to go ahead and scan the vehicle's computer to find out what that code's all about. So in the Ram 1500, your OBD port for scanning is right here underneath, right next to the uh, engine release, or the, I'm sorry, the hood release latch. And I've got a, a blue driver, a Bluetooth scan tool here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this in, pull the codes, You'll see that lights right up once it uh, recognizes it's plugged in. I'm going to pull the codes and we're going to find out exactly what was going on uh, with this uh, service engine light that came on for me. All right, so I followed the steps using the blue driver scan tool. Went ahead and pulled the codes off of the computer and the RAM. And what we came up with was a trouble code P1524. Um, that was showing under confirmed codes, pending codes, permanent codes, and powertrain control module. So it's definitely a present uh, trouble code. And the way that that's described is oil pressure out of range, camshaft advanced retard disabled. So certainly this is something that we need to investigate further. Um, something I noticed while I was driving, I would get at certain RPMs, probably between 1500 to 2000. Um, I'd hear kind of like a strange like vibration uh, in the engine idle or the, you know, the engine revs. And so uh, I think we figured out what that, what was the cause of that. But anyway, certainly something of concern. So the next step is we want to check the oil pressure and find out if we actually have adequate pressure. And so what I did is I jumped on all data DIY. Um, if you guys haven't used this before, it's great. It's online service manual, basically. So you don't have to have like the big clunky, uh, you know, normal service manual. It's all online and you can basically purchase subscriptions for whatever vehicles you have. And, you know, you keep that subscription for however long you have the vehicle and then you don't have to pay for it anymore once you get rid of the vehicle. So anyways, the steps for that are we're going to use um, an oil uh, engine oil pressure test tool. And I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. But we got to remove the oil pressure sensor and then screw in this uh, test tool and then turn on the engine, take a reading. Uh, you're going to, in this, it tells you you want to find out what it is at idle. And you also want to find out what it is once the thermostat opens or the engine warms up. And they want you to take a reading at about 3000 RPM. So here's the test tool that I have. Um, I got this one uh, on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, fairly inexpensive. I think it's 25 or $30. Um, and what you get in this kit here is uh, everything you need to be able to uh, take a reading on the oil pressure. So what we ended up using is uh, down here, you've got your gauge, which is going to give you pressure. You got a release valve right there. And then there's a quick connect so that you can uh, just, once you've threaded on the adapter, and for this RAM, it uses the number six uh, adapter here. Once you've threaded it on into the, the port for the oil sensor, the oil pressure sensor, then you can just take this quick release and you can see, look at that, there's some oil left in there from when I used it last. Um, but you just use this quick release to snap it on the, in there so that you can use a socket to put it on there. So I'm gonna show you next uh, where that gets hooked up inside the engine compartment. So let's check it out. All right, so let's pop open the hood. And I'm going to show you where the uh, engine oil pressure sensor is. And that's exactly the part that we're going to take out. And let's see. Here we go. So right in here, it's going to be on the passenger side front of the engine. And you can kind of see it right down there. I'm going to wiggle around and get the camera right down there so you can see it. And I've actually already unplugged it right there that's the 
oil pressure sensor. So there's a plug on there, and if I can grab it, there you go. So this plug has a little um, clip, and depending on how it's oriented, you'll be able to see it or not, but you, you press on the back side close to where the wires are on it to get it to release. You're gonna slide that off, and then uh, you'll use a socket to loosen that sensor. And you'll need, I think it's a 27, number 27, uh, and it's gotta be a deep well socket to get that off. Here, I'll show you. All right, so here we are. We've got a number 27 deep well, and I've got an impact socket because that's one that I had that was the right size. Um, and I also put an extension on there so that once you, uh, once you get it on there, then you can get a ratchet on the back side of it. So you're gonna get that socket on there. You can see my extension is just barely sticking out the other side here. Gonna big, get a big old ratchet, get it onto there, and then we're gonna loosen that out. Now, be aware, a little bit of oil is going to come out when you take that off. So you definitely wanna throw a pan, a drip pan underneath, because um, a little bit of oil is gonna come out of there. All right, so once you've got that taken off, and by the way, uh, that 27 millimeter socket, I think that's equivalent to uh, inch and a 16th. So if you've got inch and a 16th, that'll work as well. Once you've got the oil pressure sensor taken out, you're gonna go ahead and take this adapter and thread it in there. Um, and you'll notice on here that there is a little O-ring, little rubber O-ring. You wanna make sure that that O-ring is on there and in good condition so that when you uh, start up the engine using this tool, you don't get oil leaking all over the place. So, and th this kit, gives, they give you a bunch of extra O-rings so that as that gets damaged and used over time, um, yeah, you're good to go. So anyways, this number six was the one to use. And I think that came out to its equivalent to an M10 thread. Anyhow, so once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and get a reading and you'll see in the service manual, it's saying at curb idle, so basically um, once it's running and just idling, uh, you should be a minimum of four PSI, which is super low, but it's saying minimum four PSI. Once the uh, thermostats open up, engine's warm, you rev it up to 3000 RPM, uh, it's saying that we should have 25 to 110 PSI for acceptable range. Now, we know we took the readings and we knew we found that we were within that range. We're about between 25 to 30 PSI uh, when we revved it up to 3000 RPM. And um, so we were in acceptable range, but we still had this trouble code. So what's going on there? So in the service manual, when I looked up the actual trouble code, it gives you a, a, a number of steps to follow. One of those being checking the oil pressure. Um, but it also tells you in here that um, in order for the variable cam timing to be enabled, um, pressure has to be, has to reach 42 PSI and cannot drop below 31 PSI. Um, so based on that, I never got to 31 PSI when I was uh, uh, testing it with the gauge. So that told me right there, okay, yes, in fact. So I've got oil pressure, good. The engine's being lubricated. There's not gonna be any major damage, but there's an issue with the variable cam timing that is causing, that's what I found out was causing that kind of like uh, strange, like rattling type of noise while I was, you know, between 1500 and 2000 RPM. All right, um, what's next? So I changed the oil pressure sensor, I changed the PCV valve, and the check engine light still persists. It's still there. So I'm scratching my head, what do I do? Okay, so I went back and I said, what changed? What did I do differently? Well, I changed the oil to a different brand, and in that situation, I also used a different brand oil filter. So I thought, okay, let's go back to square one. I went ahead and put uh, Valvoline full synthetic, what I had been using previously with no problems. Um, and in that situation, I think I used a mobile one oil filter and 
bingo. The check engine light is gone, trouble code is gone. So boom, we're awesome. What I did, I went back to Amsoil and said, hey Amsoil, I had this problem with your product. Is there something wrong? Is there a spec difference or is this out of compliance for the Hemi engine? And they said, no way, our oil is perfect for the Hemi engine, um, but where your problem might be is the oil filter. So here's where we're at. This is the oil filter for the 2013 and later models of the uh, Ram with the 5.7 Hemi. That's the size right there, pretty small. Here's 2012 and older models. Look at the difference on this. So you've got a lot more circumference, so more filtering media to filter out debris in the oil as opposed to this one. Now, what I learned is that change was done as a result of the electronic power steering and just the space that's available in this uh, engine compartment. What I also found out is this oil filter will fit the newer, uh, the later model year for the Ram engine, or the 5.7 Hemi. And if you look closely, you'll notice that that rubber gasket is exactly the same size. So it's a little bit tighter fit, but in all reality, it'll still fit in there and you'll get a lot more filtering media to clean out debris out of the oil. So I've got this size on right now. Next change, I'm gonna step it up to this. Um, and again, check engine lights gone. What I will tell you, kudos to Amsoil. They stepped up to the plate. They sent me a full replacement um, oil change. So seven quarts of uh, 5W20 synthetic uh, signature series. It's not cheap oil. They sent that to me and said, here you go, you're taken care of on your next change. Um, so I'll be stepping up to this one next time around, the larger filter, and we're gonna go back to Amsoil and hopefully we'll have a great result. I know Amsoil makes top of the line oil. So there you go, guys. That was the solution to my problem, oil filter. Start there before you start changing any sensors or uh, valves. Hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Talk to you later.